Oh, here we go again with the inevitable question after every accident involving an open cockpit car and a head injury. Why should we use closed cockpits instead of open ones? And why do we still have open cockpits anyway? Why the hell don't we have closed cockpits yet? I mean, sure, we've had fatal accidents like Dan Weldon and Henry Surtees. Near fatal ones like Felipe Massa and Maria de Bellota's testing crash in England. But the discussion surrounding closed cockpits just never seems to come to fruition. Fernando Alonso once suggested testing the idea of closed cockpits, which seemed at the time a pretty novel concept. I mean, we have aeroplanes that use them, so why not Formula One? Oh, but wait, we do have reasons to keep open cockpits, like tradition. Sebastian Vettel said it himself, it's one of the things that are very special about Formula One. According to him, open cockpits give us the benefit of driver identity, because nothing is more important than distinguishing between two team cars based on their helmets. What do you mean it's dangerous for the driver? The danger adds to the allure of the sport, you uncultured swine. But I suppose some complainers could argue that emotional, historical and marketing reasons aren't worth endangering drivers' lives. But what do they know? They probably just want to ruin all our fun. You know, back in the day, F1 cars were designed with no seatbelts and open cockpits so the driver could easily bail out of the car when it inevitably caught on fire. But as time went on, the idea of safety started to become a thing. Seatbelts were added, but the open cockpit remained a sacred cow. Sure, there have been some discussions about closed cockpits over the years, but that would be sacrilege to the unique open wheel nature of the sport. I mean, who cares about driver safety when we can see them controlling the car with a camera above their head? It's not like other motorsports like DMT and WEC have figured out how to protect their drivers without sacrificing the thrill of the race or anything. But don't worry, F1 isn't completely negligent about driver safety. They've made some humongous adjustments over the years, like raising the sidewalls of the cars and adding headrests and neck protection systems. They like a challenge, that's why they never tried closing the cockpit and protecting the driver from all angles. That would be too easy. Still, I find it absolutely unsurprising how Formula One only started to consider making changes to their unsafe cars after a driver got knocked unconscious by a piece of debris. So thoughtful of them. And what kind of changes did they make, you ask? Did they finally decide to put a lid on those open cockpits? Of course not, that would be too logical. Instead, they made the helmet smaller and added a little carbon fiber strip. I'm sure they'll protect the drivers just fine. But alas, it seems that after all these improvements, the closed cockpit debate still managed to heat up again following yet another tragic incident. Apparently, it took the death of a certain Jules Bianchi at the Japanese circuit to make Formula One realize that maybe, just maybe, they need to shield their driver's heads from the outside. But fear not, for the FIA came up with not one, not two, but three whole concepts to improve the safety of the cars. They considered closed cockpits, the halo, and the aero screen. Wow, how revolutionary. And wouldn't you know it, the closed cockpit option was quickly ruled out. Felipe Massa's incident could have been avoided with a windshield. But what do we know? We're just engineers, not thrill seekers. But wait, some engineers actually dared to think about Formula One cars with windshields, and that's where the aero screen was born. And you know what? It's just like an indie car screen, but with an open area directly above the driver's head, so the drivers can still feel the wind in their hair, or what's left of it. But hey, adding a windshield or an aero screen would affect the car's handling and add extra weight to the middle of the car, and we can't have that. Can we? Who cares about a driver's life when you can optimize aerodynamics, right? When it came to the engineering side of things, people said, let's not forget about the massive aerodynamic redesigns that would be necessary to maintain optimal control over the airflow of the car. I mean, why care about anything when you can nerd out about physics? The drivers don't really matter that much. Okay, I lied. They do matter. A little. That's why Formula One opted for the Halo, which is much lighter and more aerodynamically efficient. And it was a much better solution than a windscreen because it didn't require a big redesign and it still looked much more like an open cockpit car than it would with a windscreen. Plus, who doesn't love the look of a Halo on top of a car? <coughs> 
speaking of the reaction to the Halo, I once did a video on it. You should check it out. Subscribe to the channel while you're at it, especially if you don't want a Halo of your own. Yes, that was a threat. But hold on, the aero screen was introduced to IndyCar with mixed results. Some drivers complained about having a windscreen added to their cars. Yeah, drivers complaining about safety measures in motorsport. Where have I seen that before? They complained about visibility, especially during sunset and at night when the light reflects off the aero screen. Some drivers even complained that the aero screen made it too hot inside the car. But what's a little heat stroke compared to the undying, unending thrill of speed? But wait, it's not all bad when it comes to the aero screen. Compared to the Halo, it offers much more protection as the driver is completely enclosed inside the car from the front, with just the top of the car being open. The Halo, on the other hand, still has some open spaces where debris can enter the cockpit. It's more noticeable in IndyCar with the aero screen than it is in Formula One with the Halo. Why, you ask? Major issue number one for the traditionalists of the sport with the aero screen is the fact that the drivers are invisible. Yes, that's a thing, apparently. Looks like racing fans are the same everywhere. But really, the reflection is the culprit here. And sure, the drivers are in their own room, so to speak, when in the cars. But you know what's missing? A sliding railing to each side of the cockpit and an extension over the top of the aero screen. Then it'll become a fighter jet cockpit instead of a racing cockpit. How cool is that? Anyway, back to the topic. The only time you get to see the IndyCar drivers is when the onboard cameras are being shown. That's when it feels like you're basically sitting on the driver looking into their souls. But now all you can see is the driver's helmet. Ah, my favorite, sponsor visibility. And sure, the aero screen has its benefits. Due to its sheer size, it punches a hole in the air that allows for greater slipstream, which is such a big win in IndyCar. And the final laps of the Indianapolis 500 will now be more exciting, as you can be multiple car lengths behind, but effectively driving into an airless portal. This specific effect is very minimal from the Halo, which is a good step for Formula One. But Formula One drivers already have enough help when it comes to the slipstream effect, with higher engine modes, battery modes, and even DRS, so they don't need an even larger hole being punched in the air. And thankfully, the Halo doesn't do that to the level that the aero screen does. Plus, the Halo is just better because, although the view is also restricted, the drivers are still somewhat visible. Yay for being able to see the drivers! What? Of course, the Halo doesn't float everyone's boat. I mean, come on, it initially looked like the integral structure of a flip-flop. But now the teams have been able to mold their cars around it, and with the correct coloring to match the cars, the eyes can get used to it. Fast forward a few seasons with the Halo, and despite what some like to say, it is not noticeable. In fact, these modern era Formula One cars would look strange without the Halo. So shame on anyone who doesn't like it. But what about fully enclosed cockpits? Will F1 ever have them? It's unlikely, but safety is being discussed more and more in the modern motorsport, so there's always a slight possibility. The Halo device already blocks large objects from hitting the driver's heads, but there's still a possibility of smaller objects hitting the driver's heads by passing through the open gaps in the Halo, so we might have to move towards closed cockpits for safety reasons anyway. To many F1 hardliners chagrin. This whole debate about closed versus open cockpits just feels like one of those pointless arguments you have with that annoying uncle at a family gathering. One side is advocating for safety, and the other is, well, they want the drivers to be visible because tradition. With that said though, if you don't want to miss out on these absolutely riveting discussions, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos I've done, like the video on the history of F1. Seriously, that one's a banger.